welcome back. We're here at the Hub Pavilion in Copenhagen, and I'm now joined by Malcolm Johnson. He's from the International Telecommunications Union. It's the lead UN agency on ICT, and I'm going to first of all welcome you and get you to explain what, what your organization does. Well, we're the, uh, the lead UN agency on uh, information and communication technologies and telecommunications uh, based in Geneva. In fact, we're the oldest international organization in the world. Why is that? When was it set up? Well, it was set up in 1865 when uh, the telegraph service was starting and there was problems of interoperability in the telegraph service between different countries. So it was set up to overcome those problems by, by uh, developing standards like the Morse code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's developed since then, but uh, we now have 191 uh, governments that are members of the organization and unusually for a UN agency we have a lot of private sector members mm -hmm. we have over 700 you've moved on from Morse code and tell me a little <laughs> bit about about why you're here in, in Copenhagen yeah actually the the objective of the ITU remains the same to provide interoperability of the telecommunications network but also to have global standards mm -hmm. for uh, telecoms and, and ICT generally so one of our main objectives is to bring the benefits of this technology to um, developing countries. Mm -hmm. And how does that interact with, with climate change? Well, there, this technology can, in fact, is probably the only way you're going to achieve the major reductions of emissions that mm -hmm. has been talked about in Copenhagen. Uh, you can't do it without, without this technology. Right. Um, and uh, estimates vary, but uh, it's around about... 40% reductions through the application of ICTs mm -hmm. in, in, in other industry sectors by, by 2050. That can be achieved through the use of ICTs. And, um, of course, you can only do that if you've got ICTs in the first place. Right. We're moving now to a, a, a new uh, um, system called Next Generation Networks, which is more software-based and uh, requires much less uh, switching centers and with a much greater temperature tolerance. So there's about a 40% saving in energy. Is there something that the ITU is lobbying for to get into the treaty specifically? Yeah, it's, um, in fact, it's, it's our membership. The membership of the ITU mm -hmm. has asked the Secretariat to promote awareness of the, the very important role that ICTs can play in climate change. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is the government's have asked us to do this, which our members are, uh, tend to be the, the communication ministries mm -hmm. in, in 191 governments. And of course, the people in Copenhagen are coming from the environment ministries. Right. So there's a bit, we're trying to connect bit these two. Yeah. And how's it going? Uh, well, it's a struggle because um, <clears throat> these people, you know, obviously have been negotiating this tax for a long time. Right. And also, if if we could get the ICT sector mentioned in the clean development mechanism, mm -hmm. then it offers it opens up the opportunity for having projects in developing countries on ICTs to have uh, carbon financing. Right. We think that there could be some uh, help in covering the cost to developing countries of rolling out broadband through the, the uh, CDM. Got it. Okay. Malcolm, thank you very much from the Morse code to the <laughs> World Wide Web. Never say that hub culture didn't teach you anything. Thank you very much for joining us, and we're here in Copenhagen at the Hub Pavilion.